everybody, and welcome back to the Total Podcast. I am your host, on Mel. Great to hear today with the Zacta, the green shirted dork. Now that was just uncalled for. Oh, uh, you have a green shirt on, so I don't know. Oh, uh, I on. know, but it's still uncalled for. <laughs> One's describing the other's is a fact of life. This is how it is. This yes, is how green it is. shirts are a fact of life. No, 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 no. You're getting it backwards. But, you know, more importantly, you know, we're going to take a little side step from the Bonacle Chats from, like, in the last cold podcast, or just the last one, maybe. I don't know, I don't know. But we're getting back on track by talking about the comics. Web comics. Lego web comics. Random funnies on the internet. And so, basically... Random bricks on the internet, too. Well, at this point, I think we have gone through all but two. I think we have two more to go through, so... Yep. I believe this one where we're going to talk about randomly assembled, if I'm correct. Correct. Before we're talking about sort of tales. Yeah, sort of tales will make more sense if we talk about randomly assembled first. Yes. Now, so for those who may not be aware or they haven't caught on, randomly assembled was your first uh, webcomic that you made. It is indeed. It is my first, longest running, and uh, overall most expansive webcomic I've worked on. Well, I think between all the siblings' webcomics, it's technically the most popular because it has the most subscribers. I didn't mean expansive in the sense of, like, well, as well. No, I mean expansive in just the most content. Uh, well, that too, you know. That's, thank that's, that's, you. that's you. That was directly at me. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I expect nothing less. But no, it's like, it's, if I'm correct, it does have the most subscribers, like, by yes. far to any uh, others. Taking my other comics out of the mix, I believe Randomly Assembled does have more than the rest of you combined. Which is roughly around... It's... Uh, I think... I think combined, you might be in, like... The well, how much does Randomly Assembled Randomly have? Assembled is, like, 75 now. Oh, okay. Now, to some people that might be like, oh, that's not that much. Like, these are web comics. Lego niche web comics, you know, that's, especially compared to, I think the probably the one that the next amount of subscribers, I bet would probably be a Pirate's Life with uh, X, like, you know, he's got a few. 22 few. last I checked, which is the next, uh, so, which is actually now tied with Bionicle Tales. That still Bionicle, baffles me. <laughs> Bionicle Tales has managed to act, is slowly been gaining subscribers. It's infamy is, uh, is paying off. I have done a little bit of advertising for Randomly Assembled, none at all for Bionicle Tales, and yet Bionicle Tales has... Arguably more well known. It's got the infamy factor, but randomly assembled the creme of the creme. Well, more like the the little the crumbs in the bottom of the bag that you can snack on. But like they're still edible. But you're like, why are you doing that? Yes, yeah, randomly assembled. In, in a nutshell, it's right there in the title. It's randomly assembled. Though over the years, it's definitely established some key story arc stuff. It's like basically a collection of random stupid stories, but. It is definitely focused on the quantity over quality as far as visuals go. Yeah, so, you know, it's very, um, it's definitely got a very unique flavor. It's very much, I would say, the most nonsensical. And due to its sheer quantity, it's probably consistent, it's probably considered my funniest webcomic because it has the most chances to hit a funny Well, note. out of all the webcomics, I would say it's also the, sorry, the one that focuses on the humor aspect more than any of the others. Given that I will... I will work a story arc around a stupid joke. Yes. Well, it's like it, it is. It is actually a cartoon comic, sort of like ideas. Yeah. It is a Sunday morning cart like um, um newspaper comic. While all the others are more like they're they're web comics with often very humorous aspects to them. Or stories that they're made made into a comic. We we, we like our jokes and all, but I would say randomly assembled outside of Rock Miners because I would say my comic is also a. Was 100% focused on yes. the jokes. However, um, well, that that isn't really going on. So it's really a contender. Yes, randomly assembled humor is number one priority, whereas in others, humor tends to take the second or third or fourth seat. Yeah. So what what made you want to start, and where did the origins come from? I'm not actually sure. I can't remember exactly what the details of you starting this was. In all honesty. I mean, I know knowing our brothers who had done web comics certainly. Probably was the, the, the final nail in the coffin to get me to finally make my own, but uh, I was in the age, you know, just becoming, reaching the end of my teens, and I had gone into reading Irregular Webcomic and Reasonably Clever, which really made me want to start t doing my own comics, and that's also what inspired just the title, Randomly Assembled. Yeah, when you look at Reasonably Clever or uh, uh, Irregular Webcomic, you kind of get a similar... Um, uh, feel and aspect Two for words them. kind of working together, and like what even like though it wasn't the full intent, 
I was kind of trying to find two words that kind of sounded good together, that worked well for a title, and kind of basing off those two. But I really do find that just randomly assembled has worked so well because, A, the stories themselves are randomly assembled, and it's made out of Lego, something you assemble and build. Look at this way. You'll, you'll, you, under, you know what you're in for pretty quick when you read the, the title, pretty yes. much. It's not leading you into, like, unlike something like, um, uh, I don't know. Actually, I got nothing. I don't have that little example. All their titles are usually pretty um, self-explanatory. Except for maybe Android Files. That one started out... Ex yeah, that was... Actually, like, the Files bit always sort of seemed off, but it was just a nice name. Well, for the very first one, it was like... It made well, sense. the oh, Androids no. is, but when you think Files, that one... It led to a mystery, however, it kind of went away about that. But, you know, going back to, you know, um, around so because, you know, that's, that's what we're talking about. It is. It is also kind of interesting, because if I'm correct for... Um, Bongo Tales, it got its origins in uh, Randomly Assembled. Uh, kind of. Kind of. I had, like, I think, well, initially it was just one web comic, so anything and everything was in Randomly Assembled. Bionicle Tales was, I had enough idea for stories and whatnot for Bionicle Tales that I was like, you know, I feel like this should be its own thing. And there was, for quite a while, they ran side by side with Bionicle stories in Randomly Assembled, but those ones were much stupider, we'll just say. Yeah, like, and would don't get me wrong. come and go. My Uncle Tales definitely had some stupid comics, but those are more delegated to the in-between seasons and certain characters, I'd say. Yes. And, like, with Randall Assembled, My Uncle Tales went from kind of... Well, the Bionicle story arc went from being kind of just following meandering Toa to Gen 2 Bionicles kind of just doing comic dialogue. Hmm, yes, yes. So, how, how many comics have you put out so far of this? Um, I am in, like, I think I've just hit 2,200. 2,200. So, 2,200. Which just puts everyone else to shame, because no one else has even reached, um, uh, 500, I, I think. I yet. think, um, Android Files has actually reached 1,000, but that one's a bit more of it's a... It's kind of cheating. Yeah, that one's hard to really gauge. Because if you think about it, yours are four picture comics. This is basically a single see, picture. it's not even page. that. It's like... Um, how ones is like a page, whereas in like a chat where he will upload like what 15, 12 pages for upload, where I'm like one individual, where it's, it's like not a full a direct comic. balance. But even compared to like the ones that are more classic yeah. in the comic format of like let's say um actual Breakfast News and a Pirates Life, that are both being yeah. I think a Pirates Life may hit a thousand. I don't think it's hit that. He definitely hit five hundred. I think he's getting close to a thousand though. And uh, even Bionicle Tales, which has based tech technically should be running longer and more consistently than a pirate's life. I don't think that's even hit five hundred either, but it has. Mm. So yeah, but they're, they're the, getting there. Of course, the the main factor to that is randomly assembled, post daily. Yeah, it's the only one that's even like anyone that pretty much after that is like a weekly comic at best. I Bi weekly think, is I think. Um, a Pirate's Life ended up being bi-weekly on its best days, like, in its the most... It's been bi-weekly for a while. I think Rock Mars was bi-weekly for a short yeah. time. However, uh, <laughs> unlike a Randomly Assembled, uh, all the artists did not stay into that. I mean, Randomly Assembled started out as every three days, then I dropped it down, or bumped it up to every, every second day, but I just found that, you know, my creation of comics was vastly more than what I was putting out, so I felt comfortable. I also got a good, significant, like, year-long buffer, or two years, that... You have I, a lot... Of... I have, like, a three-year buffer right now, but I realized, like, I had a really good buffer, and I wasn't... Pretty much what you're saying is if you weren't yeah. hospitalized for three years, you could still upload yeah. comics the whole and time. no one would know, but it was like, I had been... I had a huge buffer, and I was just... The, 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 the pace of Bill making comics never really faltered, so I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll bump it up to every day and just see how long I can maintain that. And it's been going strong for almost 10 years now. It is honestly very impressive. I mean, because it covers so much other stuff, it's like, I feel like there's, it's like, what is there to be said about something that can basically have anything and everything at once in it? What, what can really one say besides, well, that's a pile of everything. That's a, well, that's a fine pile of dirt. Well, that's a fine pile it of is a pile. It is a polished turd. A very nicely polished turd. It is honestly quite an accomplishment to look at. But the fact is, 
than daily for half, like, what, two, three years now? I think by after the, the end of the first year, it had already gone up to daily uploads. Hmm. I mean, don't get it, most of us always, you know, most of us do make um, comics in advance and usually have a bit of a buffer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, definitely, I think the longest buffer anyone's had outside of it is maybe, like, half a year's worth of comics made. Because I think Empire's Life's had that, too, so I'm like, pretty much in any metric of all the comics, Actually, the Randomly best... Assemble can pretty much stand, like, beating all the metrics, like, for subscribers, yes. the amount of content, the, um... Even just, like, I would say engagement from viewers is decently Actually, high. Actually, engagement from viewers, the best one on that, ignoring Android Files, because I know I engage with it a lot, but he's my brother and all well, that. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of a variety but, of people, like, the amount of different amount of people. And, uh, okay. I, was I mean, say, also, best because, engagement would honestly be um, amongst, amongst the stars. But then that only up, goes up once a week. And it also has, like, eight subscribers, which, considering that I get more comments on that, I would say, on a regular basis. It's than got the most loyal simple. fan base that isn't, um... Siblings. Basically, it's it's done what I've still got to do. It's it's for the it's for the fans, the the, the people who can appreciate fan fiction, but also appreciate Star Wars. But so it's like, but pretty much every metric you like, you mean like, yeah, Larry yeah. and someone does get as many um comics per um or comments per yeah. comic. However, if you add up all the comments, like not including the amount of ones, I would say definitely feel like it's had the most variety. And it's, there it, are it is very some... interesting. I would say something that's very interesting that you'll get the very specific comics where it's like, oh, this is funny or something, but they will get ones referencing very specific characters like, oh, why would you do Spanky like that or something? And they're like, all right, so we really understand what character Stick and Peel's mind. Spanky is the number one character in Randomly Assembled. He doesn't actually appear all that often, but he is he, the number one character. He is the first character He's the epitome of Randomly Assembled. Exactly, he is the epitome. He is the first character you see, and he just... So, you know he, I there? took... Randomly assembled all my Lego collection with all their personalities. Some have been tweaked a little for the comic, but Spanky is Spanky. He has been Spanky for years. And he encapsulates Randomly Assembled so well. I but, mean, he's the owner of Intergalactic Junkyard. Yeah, but as you were saying, like, with the, the commenters, there are definitely comic, um, comics that you think, this is sure to elicit some sort of response against nothing, but there are definitely some staple comics that will, that even to this day will occasionally get a new comment on. Number one being Spanky Comics. Like, one of his first appearance about quality junk. <laughs> I have gotten comments on that years after I first uploaded that. I mean, let's be honest, though, Spanky Comics, Spanky is, an, is, like I would say, one of the most interesting characters and the most character character. Like, he actually feels like a character, like more of a character, an actual person than most. When it comes to characters and just But like, again, you've also had the character's been unchanged since your childhood, so it's like And yet he's you also intimately one, understand He's this also person. one of the most inconsistent characters. Where there's some True. characters I try to abide by, okay, who would actually say this and would he actually say something like this? Because I'll I'll say a lot of stuff just for the punchline. Spanky will flat out contradict himself for a punchline. Yeah. And I feel like it's in his character to contradict himself. Yeah, yeah, no, Spanky. Because he's just uh, trying to make a sale. But at the same time, Spanky also just seems a little bit um loose in the head, yeah. a little bit gear loosey, and, and like, so it's like when you think like as in Randomly Assembled, there are so many different characters because there's like so many like different people we follow, some more than others, and Spanky is one of the four staple like pillars of Randomly Assembled, despite the fact that overall but Johnny Quartet, Spanky, and, and the in the kitchen with in Dave. In the kitchen with Dave. In the kitchen with Dave is you know he's one of the most notable characters. People do like him, and I have fun with them. And he epitomized randomly assembled stupidness. Uh, Adventures is, they are quantity. They are personally my most passionate, I think, of the stories to follow. And, you know, they really define themselves within that webcomic. Even though I basically see... Um, it's a great way yeah. to honestly distinguish different um, Lego versions. Because you've had enough of the Adventure of Johnny Thunder like in your comic... And how one's also had in, 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 um, yeah. Android files. It's like, all right, this is now a very easy way to describe how um, randomly assembled is, how different your verse is from others. Yeah. But like, like, how one's Johnny Thunder, his adventures, those in my mind are the adventures. That will always be the adventures, adventures. And yet, mine has become so vastly different that you'd almost call him a villain more than the, the protagonist. I would just call him scumbag and douche, and douches. Douchey scumbag. And then there's. Quartet, that was, they were intended to be essentially the quote-unquote main cast. Kind of like 
reasonably clever, we would just be following some random people on shenanigan adventures. For the mo and that's what they achieved to do. And then there's Spanky, who we established. It just he is the face of randomly assembled. Despite the fact that Zach Tap, my avatar, is the face of randomly so assembled. Spanky is the true face of randomly assembled. Yeah, it's like well, I mean, let I mean Spanky, you know, who can go wrong and. He's definitely the one I definitely enjoy seeing one the most. And I think that might actually come from the fact that I don't... Despite the fact that I love using him, he... Like, his... You look at it... I broke up all, all the chapters in the archives, and you'll find the ones under Spanky are really... There isn't actually a lot of content there. That because he ended up just leeching off a bunch of other yeah, ones. Yeah, Spanky has taken a large... Took, there was definitely a long bit where he was part of Brent Skywalker, but yeah, he leeches off others... So his own personal theme is somewhat limited, and I think that might actually be part of the charm. Is I'm not, you're not forcing yourself to make. I'm not overusing him in the sense that like yeah, you know, there's no he, story with Spanky, which is why it's easy to kind of go on high. Spanky just works in certain situations, and there is certainly a running gag that I think is starting to show up now, where the people Walmart just office? know where people just refer to Spanky. It's just like they're like you're looking for some like yeah he's been, people just like. He's turned to a Zoidberg. Yeah, no, people just, like, think you're looking for Spanky or something. They're like, or they use Spanky as a rev, like, no, it's not Spanky's junkyard. <laughs> nah, I know, it's nice. It is nice, and, you know, Randley Assemble definitely is, is uh, really cool, and it definitely, I think you definitely doing that, basically, I think pushed me for the origin to finally start doing mine as well. I and mean, I'm Which sure... makes sense, because I would say, because you're the most um, um, comedy-heavy, Rockmire is very much was like, oh, that's also what comics are doing. Because like, it also time, gives you a daily reminder that maybe I should do this too. It, it was a bit more a reminder when I'd be seeing you constantly make uh, Especially comics. since when the, How One does weekends and Eck does basically Mondays and Fridays, there's kind of that gap in the middle of the week that if I'm not posting something, you're not getting anything. Yeah, there's like a very noticeable day where it's like, ah, just randomly assembled. <laughs> Though I will say... Be, Throughout all my web comics, particularly especially when I was doing the tournaments on myself, there would basically, on the exception of the weekends, you would get from me alone three updates a week, two on the weekends, just because I worked it so rarely assembled every day, and then amongst the stars was Saturday. My uncle tells when they're in their chapters is three days a week, and then I would fit in the last three days the um. Two for Sword of Tales, and then one for the Zeddy Zone, which we're not going to ever talk about. And then that was two updates every day. And then when I was doing the tournaments, I would do Mondays to Fridays, so you would get three updates from me in a day. I, I, you know, can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with which that. Which I envy, because I can go, I can have days where I have no updates, and I have I subscribed to more than just my siblings, which there is, is very There is one sad. thing that I can guarantee is going to happen. Is the Randomly Stone is going to outlive all the other comics. Not only just because you have a buffer, just because I feel like you'll have the drive to make comics probably far longer than the rest of the world. Well, since that we have been talk we've talked about all but sort of tales, um, Randomly Assembled is certainly looking to be one of the first to get the axe due to its quantity. Though Bionicle Tales is the first Lego web comic to probably be completely chopped off. Just because a the motivation to take pictures of Bionicle can come and go, because right now, where we live now, it's like actually... I take way more room to like, take pictures. Way more room, but by, oddly enough, living here in the apartment with you, I actually find more motivation to do that, probably because the Bionicles are already out in a mess, it's easy to grab and take a picture. It's honestly probably not hard to be in a Bionicle move, too. That is, here. it's easy to be in a Bionicle. But I will say that as far as the motivation for story goes, that's where it hits, because it's not so... It's one story I have to be motivated for. Whereas in Randomly Assemble, if I forget, to, I lose motivation for the adventures. I've got a whole bunch always, of others. I can always can, come back to them. Exactly. I've got other stories in Randomly Assemble. It's not like I've got one solid story. I will admit there's been a few times where I think some stories you picked up again. I'm like, oh, right. This is, like, I think Brent Skywalker had a bit of a break for quite a while. At least that I reminds me. I don't enough know. I think I might need to take pictures for that one. No, no, I think I'm still, I'm still good for another week or so. The horrible. Absolutely Horrible. <laughs> the problem with having so many is you kind of, like, you know, I take them in 
I used to take it like just grab all the Lego to these comics and just take like a few pictures to each comic. Then I worked it to I made really big batches called like I would probably spend like all afternoon just taking pictures. And then I worked it into okay when this one's pictures run out I'll take pictures for this one. Rather than trying to take it all in one shot I actually try to break it up even if it's like every week now opposed to like every two months. It's a lot easier to manage and because you know you put things off because you know you're not going to get back to it right away. It is somewhat difficult to remember or keep tabs on what needs pictures at times. Yeah, yeah. That's one nice thing about having my ticket. The only comic I have, which I haven't worked with in a while, is being just um, one thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't envy the uh, randomly assembled yeah. conglomerate. Because like, honestly, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, how do you keep track of all this? Honestly. I actually feel my like consistency is actually pretty good, even though I feel like inc I like it when there's inconsistencies because it just adds to the charm. I would say the real. biggest inconsistencies are sometimes the visuals with backgrounds or how many fake looks or something like That's that. That's because, as far as backgrounds go, it's you know you took the picture half a year ago and you took pictures half a year ago and you finally finished that plot. So now you take take new pictures and I really actually tried to work it that as long as I'm in one background, to just keep taking the pictures until they're out of that background and that's where my cutoff is. So I don't have that inconsistency, but like, like, uh, Birthday Boy's house, it falls on characters when it first appears, in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and then, next thing you know, it's next to a gas station, then it's no longer next to the gas station, but it's nearby the gas, it needs, it's wherever it needs to be. I, I, I like, I like that fact about it, though, it kind of abuses like, me. Like, and that was, I, I actually acknowledged it in its first move, but I've never mentioned it since, it's like, that's like, I'm sure there's other things like that. But that's, like, the biggest inconsistency that's just become part of its charm. But uh, what you were saying with the, um, it'll probably outlast it all. And, you know, you're probably right, since I've got a three-year buffer right now. Like, Who you knows? might stop it before another one, but it will outlive otherwise. Like, especially with um, Ak having a, 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 little, a little elephant baby on the way, there's a good chance that he know whether he wants to or not, he might just not have the time to make more comics, despite the fact he's only got one to focus on. Is there higher quality and much... He's got a higher budget. I mean, um, how one has proven that once you have kids, you are able to continue Oh, well, you can, comics. but... There'll be a notice, but I would say... I would say for a little while, until the kid or gets a little probably older. he'll be, you know, working on comics when he's, when he knows, basically, he's like, all right, I'm watching the kid, he's taking his nap, I'll work on comics during yeah. that. So, in, um, how one's favor, his work schedule does put him... He's home relatively early in the day, giving it, you know, a chance. He's, he actually is home when there's no it, kids It'll around. be interesting to see, and I mean, also, even just, like, with the, yeah. the tenants in the podcast, um, I cannot guarantee how much um, uh, Ack will be able to make in future times. Who knows? I mean, we'll see. It, just a warning. But as I was saying, you know, it's, um, so there, there's that, but also, well, some stories I am feeling a bit of struggle to maintain them just because I, I don't want to end them well, because I like some them. stories are probably gonna die no but like I know there's a lot more I still want to do like it's, it gets posted sometimes well, the most you frequently can't, you can't kill that yet you but, have a very specific build you need to have and take pictures inside for them to truly have it trust me the Scooby game can't be done until you've had them in the museum relive those old days Joe. I mean that was never the plan, and that's not why I'm building that mock. I just want to build now it. Now you have to do it. I mean, I probably will. But and you know exactly what villain you need to do. Scooby-Doo and Adventures have a lot of things I want to do. But uh, as we're starting to see now, we are t I didn't initially plan any large arcs. I just went with goofiness that becomes stories. But as we're starting to see now as old dogs, airheads, as a short little chapter of Airheads tight under the um, building up just ended. We are working on to like basically the big climax that I've sort of basically built for myself over the last few years. Though I did plan some big climaxes with the Max, so I've sort of deviated in a new direction. The Max is still there, but I've... I've they're not, not as... A, scourge. They're not the scourge I initially planned, because honestly I kept forgetting about them. And other like, oh right, yes, the Max. Because, you know, it took so long between photo shoots, you'd forget details. I... Uh, but, uh, I... I'm reaching the big climax to that, kind of like, you know, the Infinity War. And I have plans for basically, like, the next... The next big thing. This is going to lead so, into... Actually, funny, because I was really going to be kind of getting to the point where I was going to ask. 
if you had any like um, future aspirations oh, for yeah. the comic. I was quite content. If I had to end my comic in basically two and a half to three years, where we finally see the... Actually, no, probably closer to two years, we'll actually see the climax I've been talking about. We're starting to really see it now, but... I would have been happy ending there because I achieved that first goal. You know, I, I really achieved what I essentially began set out to do after I started it. What I started was a comic to just go, but this is kind of what I set out to do probably about five years in. Mm. But yeah, I've already got plans and the makings and the work to set up for the next next wave because unfortunately it's taking a really long time because one batch of comics, Scooby Doo. It's taking so, a long time to get through. Let's also preface this so people might understand. Yeah, there may be some overarching um, story, but still 90% of this is just random shenanigans. They Most story arcs do their own thing, but there's a lot of crossovers and mixings. Like Spanky. Spanky, probably half his appearances are not even in his own chapters, just because Spanky is so versatile and useful. Yeah. And so do you see an end in sight for Randomly Assembled Ever End at any point? Uh, I have... A tentative plan of how I will end it if I feel that, that I, you know, I've just burnt myself out. I do intend to at least close things off as best I can. But right now, I don't see any real definitive end in sight. Especially as long as my life is the way it currently is. Aye, aye. Well, you know, I'll definitely be interested to still have the daily upload. I, I do enjoy at least having a comment as a daily upload. I, 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 be, I, I actually realized something. I'm pretty sure I stopped reading the daily Garfield comics not long like, after you start uploading Randomly Assembled, like, don't get me wrong, I kind of stopped the, finding interest in Garfield comics along, like, before that, but it was still kind of like, I like to enjoy at least a daily comic, and Randomly Assembled actually kind of filled that little void of something daily. Something stupid. And as you have a test, you know, that I can, I've can. i gone pretty predictable over the years, you know, Birthday Boy will smack you in the face with the, the door. There, there are some running gags. There are running gags, but... Every once in a while, I still can't Look, surprise you. Look, if Boy doesn't smack a person in the door when they come there, I'd be disappointed. I would be disappointed. It'd be very... It's like having a tray of lasagna that Garfield doesn't eat. It would be sad. Like, like, a couple months ago, I, I was just in the other room, and I just hear you crack down laughing, because one guy's excuse was he had eggs for breakfast. <laughs> I didn't intend it to be that funny. I just intend to throw something random that makes no sense in there, and then you just... Uh, yeah, like, that's funny. It's it. nice to know I still got it once I'll admit, Larry, someone does have the best jokes in it's also got the worst joke in it, but it definitely has the best joke in it. I think that's because Hero League is a newer line as well. It's also, it lends itself to being stupid. It, yeah, because you've also been doing it longer, so I would say you've had more time it's to fresher. refine your art. Started later on, and it hasn't burnt itself out yet. Yeah, no, so um, definitely I'll say, you know, um, definitely check out Randomly Assembled. I would say, especially because... Sure, you may not always get a banger every day, but just wait until the next day. You never know. You don't have to wait. Well, Randomly assembled. It's pretty, it's pretty dependable. If there's one of all these comics of where it's like, you know what? If you want to get used to something and don't want to see it go anywhere anytime soon, go for Randomly Assembled. It ain't leaving anytime soon. Let it does that. have dry spells because sometimes I get focused on the stories and try to build up to a joke. But I do try to be at least amusing most days. And it's more humor centric, but... It is dependable, it is there. Hopefully it doesn't get dry and repetitive, but... So, you know, like, um, definitely, you know, I'll put the link in the description, as always, and, you know, we're, we're, we're reaching the end of, uh, going through, actually, a lot of the comics. I'm pretty sure I just have one more to talk about with each of you now. Well, one more with you, one more with Powan, and then one more with, um, Ek. Oh, Ek, technically, we're going to be talking about mine in a more roundabout so, way. So, you and Ek will be going over... Rock Miners. Rock Miners. Oh. Uh, Mostly. what is it, uh, Grandfather's Tale that you and Hal one have? No, we haven't done Cross Bricks, Grand... Kind of everything else. I mean, Hal one and I basically decided the last seven one of his comics is to kind of more... Talk about kind of just all of them together, because we've discussed a fair bit of Grandfather's Tales already, kind of as a yeah, preface. Just, uh, but yeah. we haven't gone much in depth to Cross Bricks, so it's kind of more just me a closing off, kind of just not oh, like, okay. whatever else. And then, once we've gone through the last three, we got to talk about Crossover Championship. Which, actually... So, yes. Mentioning that might actually have at least a thousand comics by now. It might that well, might be the one that's actually broken. There is collectively, you know, it was more than a weekly yes, update. That like, was a, a collective more, effort. Well, it was a collective effort, yeah. So, well, well okay. Well, ninety percent was you, but actually, you know, I think I alone might have put a thousand in there. I should see how much that has. I really but should. Definitely, I would say yeah. Look forward to when we get to Grandly's uh, crossover championship because yeah, we will have all four of us brothers that. I will, I will make sure we'll have all four. If, if I have to postpone recording that one, I will postpone Actually, it. Actually, you might want to record
record that one early before yeah, the baby. Before there's a baby. Nah, don't you know? I'll just have it where Hamlet's got his kids in the background. Echo will have his baby crying in the background. I have you in the background. I'll be crying too. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. you'll always be my little baby brother. Yeah, I am the baby brother of the four of us. Horrible. Yeah, no, well, so, uh, you know, thanks for uh, chatting. Thanks to all y'all for listening in. Uh, I hope you guys do check out and did enjoy this podcast. Stay tuned for more. And as usual, I have been your host, Anvermel. This has been the Toe Podcast, and we are retiring from the night. <laughs>